Uh, in this script, I'm going to talk about the marker size, color specifications, hold on and off check statements, and the pause command. They're all pretty, uh, pretty easy to see. Hopefully, it's already open. Come on. All right. So if we take a look at this script, you can see <coughs> lines 1 through 31 are the introduction. I believe it's the introduction I showed you earlier or something similar. When you're looking at this on the video, I'd recommend you open uh, the MATLAB scripts that I'm talking about. I'm going to try and say the, the lines in the script that I'm referring to so that they're easy to see because I'm not sure they'll show up on the actual video. So as you can see, I use the, the clear all, close all, and CLC command. I'm going to run this script if it would let me. freaking out. There we go. So you should get this uh, every time you open a new file or change file structure you should get this uh, this window basically asking you to change the directory. The old version of MATLAB didn't have, the, have this and if you didn't change your direct directory manually it would give you an error. So just hit change directory. It's just where MATLAB is looking for information. And it should be going. Anybody? Let's try it again. There we go. So this script generates this plot. I hit F5. That's what happened. F5 runs the command like I was talking about earlier. So basically, you have a plot. It's the temperature of the detector versus time. And I just have generic values that I made up. Uh, velocity of the gas, the RTI temperature, uh, ambient temperature, I like to use T-infinity. It's an aerospace thing. <coughs> more than aerospace, but that's what we always called ambient temperature. Temperature of the gas, which would be the temperature coming out of the fire. Uh, the temperature when the detector is going to go off and the change of the time step, which I call dt or delta t, depending upon my mood. The initial, I set the initial time equal to zero on line 47. 48 is the initial detector temperature, which is obviously the ambient temperature. And so this is the meat of the program. The program is only, I get rid of this. It's only 70 lines long, so the actual calculation code is only from line 51 to 56. We go from while the temperature detector is less than the final temperature. And then this is the DTAC equation, line 53. Basically, you just type in the variables and the orientation they are in the equation, naturally. The differential equation gets separated out, and the DT goes over on the, on the right side, which is interesting calculus, but it seems to work. Then this give, that gives you the, the change in, in temperature for each time step. You add that change to the, the temperature of the detector from the previous time step. So you'll notice we're adding one to the array every time. And then adding this to the previous number. Iterating the time step on line 56. So you take the time every every time the loop runs, it adds the delta time to the previous time. And iterate the counter on line 56. Once again, I'm not doing a super job of explaining what each line does because it's not a basic MATLAB class, <laughs> per se. This is the, the check statement. So if I gets greater than 50,000, it'll, it'll print auto break to the command window, which is fprintf, that's what that does, and break out of the, the while loop. That way, if I were to say comment this line out, control R, and then run it, not sure how long it'll take it to go 50,000 times. Might be a while, it might not. Uh, and then this plot command. So we have our figure. If you type figure and then a number. That's why I particularly didn't want to use the mic, because I figured that would happen. 
but the people told me I should, so I did. Figure, if you have figure and then parentheses, a number, close parentheses, it'll, it'll use, give it a specific figure number, otherwise the figure command will generate a new figure every time the command comes up in the script. Plot, temperature, and the, uh, the time versus temperature, and label all the axes. If we go to the command window, and we click on workspace, I cleared the variables, but they should show up here in a minute. You'll notice it says busy down here. If you have a script that's running for an extended period of time, that's what it'll say, and that's how you know it's still going. If you want to stop a script, I don't particularly want to let this one go for how long it's going to take. You can hit Control C. I forgot to mention that. Control C will will eject you out of a, a, a script that's running. Just want to point out there's nothing to kick out. I know, I did that on purpose. Oh, I thought you wanted to see how long it would take to get to 50,000. You are correct, sir. All right. That's a good right. point. <laughs> so, it obviously wasn't going to kick out because I stopped I instead of uh, this line is what I should have stopped. Exactly. Very good. I'm going to answer more of my questions. Uh, so if you control C, it'll kick you out of an infinite loop. So that's what I made was an infinite loop. It'll just run forever. If you look at your workspace, you can see the, the variables that have been generated. And I like to see their size. So you can choose the, if you go to view columns, it'll, you have an option of what you can see in your, in your workspace. So if you view the size, you can see that temperature of the detector is a 2x2 two two or 1x2 two array. Because I didn't iterate i, it didn't change, uh, change the, or increase the size above, above, above 2. And the rest of these are 1x1 one one except for time, as it should be. All right. Uh, I'll put Control t and change that back. <coughs> so that's uh, that's how that one works. Any questions about that script? 